Where did you grow up? So I grew up in Hackney, mm -hmm. um, East London. Been here my whole life, really. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it was... Hackney is very different to what it is today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't get me wrong, I think there's pros and cons to everything in life. Um, but yeah, it was, it was definitely a rougher neighbourhood compared mm. to other parts of London. Yeah. Uh, which just meant that you needed to be on your P's and Q's. So yeah. you, you realise that um, not, every, not, everyone is, uh, not everyone's going to be friendly to you. Not everyone yeah. has your best interests at heart. Yeah. Um, so you definitely get a lot of, uh, you improve your sort of street awareness or mm. become a lot more savvy as, you know, to navigate navigate the world but yeah Hackney's where I grew up in London um, and yeah been there ever since um, and would both of your parents were involved with martial arts yeah correct yeah, yeah. yeah. so both my parents were um, mum and dad both dad was doing um, sort of Japanese uh, jiu-jitsu for a while mm -hmm. um, or traditional martial arts and he's dabbled in a few other stuff as well mum the same mum then started doing Muay Thai mm -hmm. um, way before I did to be honest um, and then yeah so there's always been the influence and growing mm. up you always watched movies you know the, the cliche things of Jackie Chan movies Bruce Lee movies and all the <laughs> others really uh, and that was a nice time for the family to sit down and get together yeah. really and watch some stuff yeah. um, so there's always the element of play fighting around the house um, so it was quite quite normalized and, and then growing up um, both parents think knowing that it's been it's being beneficial for mm. them so they got us into you know things such as karate initially so we yeah. did a little bit of karate for for a period of time and then um then stopped doing that as most people tend to and then uh we went into yeah muay thai after that yeah. probably aged um, age 12. and was that bloodline that was bloodline didn't actually exist then so i started in 2004 mm -hmm. um bloodline opened in 2005 so i was initially in ko East, which was in Bethnal Green. Yeah. yeah. And Paul Maru, who is the owner of Bloodline, mm -hmm. he created it. He moved for, he was training there at the time mm -hmm. and he was still fighting at the time, but he then created his own gym yeah. in East London. And given that we were in Hackney, um, it was just a journey to get to from there all the way to Bethnal Green yeah. um, straight after school. Yeah. Um, don't know if you, you remember it, but Mayor Street back in the day used to have a really narrow path, which is closed now for mm. buses, but all the buses used to go down there. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was a journey trying to, like you would usually sit in there for a good 10, 15 <laughs> minutes, you know, um, and that would mean that we'd be late sometimes for the glass. Mm. So naturally we moved a bit closer. Um, and yeah, we went to the gym there and it was probably one of the best decisions uh, made given how um, impactful it's been on my life. Yeah. And, and so... Uh, so Paul was like your first Muay Thai trainer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'd say so. He's definitely been, um, yeah, first and for, first and foremost, and he's been there ever since. Really, like when I started, I was in the kids' classes, and he was yeah. the one teaching the classes. Yeah, you know. Um, so yeah, so he's he's been around for years. I've known him since, like I said, two thousand five. Yeah. So it's been a while. Uh, who who was around at that time? Was Phil? <laughs> Phil wasn't around no. actually. Uh, Phil wasn't around. The people who were around, who are still around today, mm. I'd say, um, would be Arnold. Mm. Arnold Borotov um, was still was around then. And in terms of fighters, that's what I'd say. There's a couple of other people who sort of um, been staff and whatever else. They've been mm. around since then. But in terms of fighters, I'd say it'd be Paul and Arnold mm -hmm. um, since then. Yeah, try not to forget anyone. But essentially, it's been been those. So obviously, you see people sort of leaving and this and the other. Yeah. And life happens, but yeah, yeah. for the most part, and yeah. Arnold's been there. And what was what was that um, what was that atmosphere like when when so when it sounds like when you first joined, was they fairly new with coming away from yeah. KO? And, was am I wrong? I might be completely wrong. Was they KO bloodline at one point? Correct. So yeah. initially, it was KO. Yeah. Um, then over the years, went to KO bloodline. Yeah. Then eventually Bloodline Gym. Yeah. So that, that was over a number of years. Um, and yeah, so it was, it was a new gym at the time. Mm. It was a very different atmosphere. And I guess as, as a kid, you don't really notice these things at the time. Mm -hmm. um, but compared to today, it was, um, yeah, it was just different. You know, mm. you've got a lot of people there who 
wanted to fight a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people who just wanted to have a sort of tear up yeah. on a Friday night and sparring <laughs> uh, or Saturday morning. That's when it was back then. Um, and given given the area, given Hackney, mm. that's what you'd expect. Yeah. And, and as Hackney's changed, then you get different type of people coming in. Um, and also the fact that combat sports in particular have or has now become such a mainstream thing. You get a lot of people who actually don't want to fight, who just want to learn the mm. skill, get fit, use, um, utilize the martial arts. So you get a different sort of group of people coming through the doors now. Mm. Um, but yeah, even then back in the days, as a, a new venture, you know, it didn't have you know, the best mats or best whatever else, mm. but then over the years, uh, thankfully you've been able to grow into to quite a nice gym. With with character, I'd say it's not a, not a bougie gym. Mm. You know, you get some places which lose its character. I think yeah. Bloodline, <laughs> you definitely know you're in Bloodline. Um, you know, through, you know, different things. But I'd say, yeah. yes, it's been taking a few a while to get here. Yeah. And uh, yeah, continued progress. Uh, and then what, at what point, how long does it take for you to start competing? Like, are you taking part in the interclubs? Or? No, quite a while actually. Yeah. Um, so started, like I said, started at, 12 was probably at bloodline 12 13 depending on time of the year my first interclub was 17. yeah yeah so that's a good four or five years of just training and i was training because i enjoyed it um didn't really have the ambition of trying to compete or anything else mm. uh and then last minute um for last did i want to do the interclub on the weekend um so i did it Loved it and continued doing it. Mm. And uh, yeah, we just kept, kept going from there, really. Yeah. And it wasn't until a few years after that, it was, yeah, probably early 20s, I was like, actually, you know what I'm doing? Because then you really, I think I've realized later on compared to where it was, the level I was fighting, I was actually, I'm fighting at a good level. Now. I need yeah. to sort of take things a bit more seriously and whatever. For the most part, up until that point, I was even into sort of the pro career, I was, I was doing it because I enjoyed it and it was mm. fun. And I still enjoy it. But there was the element of, oh, I'm just going to train because I enjoy it and it's fun. Yeah. Whereas now it's like, I'm fighting on good level against good people. I need to be training because I need to make sure I'm yeah. you know, <laughs> safe in, in, in the ring. Yeah. You know, against people who are experienced fighters, you know? Yeah. So there's that. And I think it was, um, in some ways, a little bit of a parallel between the MMA and the uh, Thai boxing or even K1 once I ventured into that. It was because I was training for a fair bit of time. I then started fighting against people who were more experienced than what I was on paper mm. um, because, yeah, I wanted to get a good fight out of it again, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so, yeah, but that, that's essentially when I first started. What, 17? Um, then I had a fair few interclubs and it continued progressing from there. Yeah. Um, and what uh, titles did you pick up during your career? Like, on the kickboxing side? Cause yeah. You, yeah. So I had the um, British and International Intercontinental one for WKU. Uh, for both of those mm -hmm. uh, along the years and um, yeah so well, picked up the two a few medals here and there as well yeah um, but yeah it was those are the two main ones I picked up yeah and what what was your what was your highlight of like the on the kickboxing side of things like including title Ooh. wins and yeah. or just or just victories highlights I don't know I think it was it was a good career overall I mm -hmm. think and I say good career overall like I've I don't know, my, my focus is MMA, don't yeah. get me wrong. And people ask me all the time, will you ever fight K1 or even Thai uh, later down? And I'll say never say never. Yeah. Depend what opportunity comes knocking, yeah. then potentially, who knows. But I would say it's in sort of the, the rear view mirror for the most part, because my main focus is improving mm. MMA. But like I said, good opportunity comes, who knows, so I may yeah. take it. Um, I don't have one main highlight it was nice to be able to fight in countries such as slovakia yeah. uh, poland just being able to experience the world a little bit more um and just the different people and mm -hmm. fight different people in different promotions um fighting on all the bigger shows in the uk as well was mm -hmm. was a highlight uh, i guess you just start off because again i think it was different to some people coming into the sport a bit later i started when i was young yeah. so i didn't really have these goals you know, yeah. i guess you have a 17 18 year old now starting like somebody young was in the gym mm. like, oh, I want to fight on Muay Thai Grand Prix one day or I want to fight on Combat Fight mm. Series. I want to win this belt or that belt. For me, it was like, I'm doing this because I enjoy it mm. and I'm going to continue fighting because I love it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so it was never like, I want to win this, I want to fight here. Yeah. But looking back, you know, I've done some pretty cool stuff and I'm quite happy with it. Yeah. Um, so I think the whole thing has been a highlight as such. I know that's probably a cliche answer. <laughs> um, but yeah, but being able to travel the world, fight in different places, win some titles along the way, which was never really 
and ambition as such. It was never like, I'm going to win this. Mm. But yeah, it was just being able to fight and do that, really.